Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, wise. Good morning. It is not morning anymore. I'm so, I'm so sorry. It's afternoon time. Good afternoon, wise. <laughs> Listen, I've had two sessions earlier this morning. And so um, I'm not sure if... Um, I'm not sure if... Um, I'm, I'm getting my times mixed up a little bit. Is that better? I was just on for a moment and they was sharing that they couldn't hear me. So I wanted to make sure that you can hear me now. Um, but I wanted to come on real fast. I wanted to come on real fast and share with you a word that many wives may not necessarily be in agreement with today. Um, many wives may not be in agreement with this. Okay. But I'm on assignment today. This is something that the Lord had shared with me. Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm saying good morning. <laughs> Happy self-care Saturday. I am here. I am here on a Saturday. Yes, I'm not I'm not on, on here on a Friday. I'm probably going to change that now because of my new assignment. Y'all know I had been talking to y'all about my new um, week Um my new, you know, assignment on my job that happened that took place this past week. It has been very, very interesting. It has been very interesting. Um, I'm not sure yet. I feel so strongly like the Lord is telling me, like, don't get comfortable here. <laughs> like, don't get comfortable here. Um, but I haven't got, you know, God, sometimes when I go to new places and new places, a new spaces, God like will give me like a time frame or he'll say stuff like, you know, you're going to be here for this amount of time or whatever. And I had not got that from him. I had not got that from him. This week, it has been more so of, this is just a place that you're passing through. You know, this is just, you know, a place that you're passing through and, you know, don't get comfortable. So that's all I got. It's like, don't get comfortable. But I'm very, very pleased and thankful for my new place. Um, I love the 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 environment, the you know, the atmosphere, the location. Um, it's spacious, it's clean, it's new. You know, I'm I'm that kind of person. You know, I like to come in set up stuff. So I go and purchase all this stuff off of Amazon. They be like, Oh, did did, did you get this from your job? Your job? I'm like, no, nah, this ain't from the company. This is this is me. This is this is me. If I'm gonna be here, I gotta be comfortable. Um, and so I did all that this week and you know. I've learned some lessons from my past places that I really want to just make sure that I take along with me. And so, yeah, this week has been, it has been definitely good. So, happy self-care Saturday. Welcome, ladies. Welcome, wives. My name is Coach T. My name is Coach T. For the ones who may not know me, I am a mental health wife coach and marriage consultant. I coach wives, I coach wives who are going through a season of separation in their marriages or dealing with a challenging season in their marriages. Um, many of the wives that I coach have biblical reasons to exit out of their marriages. They have biblical reasons to exit out, but they feel a tug. They feel a tug from the Lord that they feel like, uh, I don't know if I'm really supposed to divorce this man. I don't really know if I'm supposed to lead this man. A lot of the wives that I coach are dealing with mental and emotional distress. Um, they're dealing with their husbands who may be involved with addiction. Um, abandonment has taken place um, and or adultery. All right. And so I coach these wives. I coach these wives to confront their grief, to confront their marital distress and then help them to transform into a healthier version of themselves. All right. And so welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, we are in a, the month of June. Hello, June. Come on, summertime. Summertime ready. And y'all know I have been sharing with y'all that, you know, in the month of June, we're going to start this new series called Summertime Glow Up. All right? Summertime Glow Up, and it's really summertime grow up. All right? Um, but when you grow up, you glow. When you grow up, you glow. And so, we're kicking off, the, we're kicking off today, starting that, and... Y'all see the title. It's, it's, it's going to be a little rough today. It's going to be a little rough today. We coming in hot. All right. We, we coming into the summer months hot. Y'all ain't going to like this. Y'all ain't going to like this today. 
but I have been assigned. I have been assigned to share the news and y'all know how Coach T shares, okay? But before we get into the topic, before we get into that, I want to share with you the book that we'll be using for the month of June. It's called Becoming. Becoming the Modern Proverbs 31 Woman, right? And put that up there a little closer. That up there a little closer. And I share it in the um, capture little thing at the bottom. I share it as well. But this is kind of what, we re what we're referencing. We're going to be referencing from this. And a lot of people are like, why we got to be talking about the Proverbs 31 Woman? Like, everybody talks about the Proverbs 31 Woman. Well, y'all know Coach T is a little different, okay? Y'all y'all know I, I do. I, I, I don't really, you know, go by certain rules. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit out of the box, okay? Um, and so there are some things, there are some things in this book that has already stood out that I want to kind of like, you know, bring along with us as we are transforming into this healthier version of ourselves during the summertime. So many, you know, get into a space when the summertime comes, it's like, oh, you know, I'm hot girl summer, hot girl ready. I'm ready to, you know, go and live my best life, travel around the world, travel around the country, do all these things. But nobody ever takes into consideration that maybe... <laughs> Maybe there are some areas in my life that God wants me to improve in. Maybe there are some areas in my life that God wants me to work on. Maybe there are some things that I need to be addressing while I got some free time. I deal with a lot of wives who are in positions of leadership. These ladies are, you know, already in leadership. These ladies are running their businesses already. Um, a lot of these wives are in positions where, you know, they have the summer months all off. I have, I have um, some teachers that I that I coach, and some ladies who are just available to be flexible in their schedule. And because of that, because of that, this is an opportunity for you to glow up. Use this summer to glow up. All right. One of the things I really want to make sure that we're hitting hard is helping that wife. Helping that woman to deal with her mental distress. All right. Let's talk about your negative emotions. Let's talk about what you're going through. Let's talk about your grief. Let's talk about some of these hard things so that you can move forward on this journey because there is much work for you to do. And so I will be referencing this book. I will be referencing this book. Um, and we will kind of, you know, we kind of go from there. All right. And so I want to go to actually chapter two and I want to read a little bit from this. Hello. I want to read a little bit from this um, just to kind of give you an idea of how we're kicking off this first Saturday in the month of June. And it talks about wisdom, instruction and self-discipline. OK, y'all already probably like really coach T like, yes, we, we coming in hot. All right. We coming in hot. Wisdom, instruction, and self-discipline, all right? And the Bible verse comes from Proverbs 31 and 10, which says, An excellent woman, one who is spiritual, capable, intelligent, and virtuous, who is he? Who is she? Who can find her? Her value is more precious than jewels, and her worth is far above rubies or pearls, all right? And really what she was talking about in this verse is, you know, how to walk in excellence, right? How, how to walk in excellence. She talks about, you know, the flesh being, you know, you know, the flesh being weak and how we have to depend on God's strength and depend on God's reliance um, to help us get through our journey. Um, it tells us about, you know, decisions that we have to make, that decision that we have to make in order for us to continue to do this, the, to do what it is that God is calling us to do on this journey. And so if you have an opportunity to purchase this book, this will be a really, really good book that you can kind of like follow along. We would kind of reference this, you know, for the month of June. It's a 31 day devotional, real quick, easy read. It's not even a whole lot. Um, and you probably could read it day by day, but you know, I'm going to try to, you know, just do it, you know, week by week to kind of like spread it out for over the whole summer. So I'll be reading, you know, taking some, you know, verses from here, you know, by the week. So on that note, <laughs> as we are walking into this area of wisdom and discipline and instructions and um, placing our reliance on the Lord, I'm going to share with you today, I'm going to share with you today some data that I have been collecting, that I have been collecting from some of the clients that I've been working with to show you, to show you why your husband probably haven't came home yet. <laughs> like, your, your, husband, your, prob, your husband probably haven't came home yet because of these things, all right? Um, many other wives, many other wives that I coach 
have received promises, okay? Many of the wives, many of the wives that I coach have received promises. And even for the ones who have not necessarily received a promise from the Lord, they have not received an instruction from the Lord to leave their husband. Because a lot of times I'm having wives who's like, well, you know, God didn't necessarily tell me um, that, you know, my husband's coming back home or my marriage is going to be restored. But he didn't tell me to divorce my husband either, right? And so it's like, you may not necessarily have received a direct promise from the Lord, or you may not necessarily have received a direct, you know, word um, concerning your marriage, but neither have you got anything about not, you know, not standing for your marriage or that you're not supposed to be um, divorcing your husband. And so a lot of times this is where, this is where, and I'm going to just show you the, the little, see this right here called Wife Coach T, Wife Talks. This is why I offer the, my e-course, the Wife Talks where wives can go through a 30 day, you know, walk through this, this, this course for 30 days where they are petitioning themselves so they can hear from God. One of the things I always encourage wives is you don't want to be doing this journey and not knowing that you're not supposed to be doing this. Okay. You, you don't want to be in this position if this is not what God wants you to be. All right. You don't want to be walking down this path if this is not what God is telling you to be. Like I said, many of the wives that I coach have biblical reasons to exit out of their marriages. And some of the hell that they go through, they wonder, will God really want me to go through this? Will God really want me to stay in this? Will God really want me to navigate through this journey? Like, I don't even understand why God would want to take me through something like this. And so this is one of the reasons why I encourage wives to, even if you don't necessarily meet with me, Coach T, get the course okay get the course for the summertime of the course i'm gonna have a summer uh a summer course it's gonna be for 99 dollars plus a little 15 dollar fee but it'd be for 99 dollars. okay get the course walk through the steps do what it says read the instructions and allow god to help you make a decision if this is something that you want me to do god or not that has to be first base wise okay that 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 has to be first base you need to know if this is something that God is calling you to. Like I said, many of the wives have had a, a tug in from the Lord where they know, yes, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. But a lot of these wives are still very, very confused about this journey and if this is supposed to be. That's first base. Get the e-course. Go through the, the steps for 30 days to figure out, Lord, is this something that you're calling me to? Is this something I'm supposed to be doing? I don't know. All right. Now we have the wives who know, they know that they're supposed to be doing this journey. God has been very, very clear with his instructions. He have given them specific and verbatim things to do. And they're pretty much certain that they're supposed to be doing this journey. All right. So this is where I want to start at today. What I have seen and what I have noticed on this journey is the wives who husbands are not living in the home. Y'all going to probably have to play this video a couple of times. I'm going to try to be, you know, talk as slow as I possibly can. But y'all know I get hyper. Y'all know I get, you know, a little active, a little, a little passionate about this kind of stuff. So I might, my voice might raise up. So I'm just going to give you a heads up. For the wise who husbands who are not in the home with them, okay? Because a lot of the wives, they have some of their husbands who are living in the homes with them. And they're still living a separate life, okay? They're still living a separate life. But for the wives who husbands are not in the home with them and God has given you specific instructions on staying in that marriage or not divorcing your husband or pursuing, you know, you know, this, this, this marriage, please hear me on today. Okay. Because these are what some of the things I have been seeing with some of the clients that I have been working with over the uh, last couple of years. All right. Um, and then we just had, I just had a recent, like I said, I had two sessions prior to me coming on here. So, um, this is something that also had came up. What I have seen the wives who are not sexually connected to their husbands while he's on the outside of the home have been more successful on their journeys than the wives who are sexually connected to their husbands while he's on the outside. That was a lot. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> For the wives who have not been sexually connected, they have not been sexually involved with their husbands while going through a separation. I have noticed that these wives have been more successful on their journeys 
then the wives who are having sex with their husbands while he's outside of the home. Okay? Even if God has told you your husband's coming back home. Okay? Because this is where it can kind of get complicated at. Because a lot of times wives are feeling like, well, if God told me my husband's coming back home, then what's wrong with me having sex with my husband? If, if God has told me that my husband is coming back home, then why can I not be with my husband in that, in that type of way? Okay? You have to understand, wife, with you being separated from your husband and your husband being outside of the home and you and him still being intimately, you know, being intimately, sexually connected, that does not make you and him close. That does not make, you know, things between you and him like, oh, okay, well, you know, we, we good. That just gives your husband options. Right? That that just give your husbands that yet just give your husband options. Your husband has the option to come, be with his wife, chill at his house, do whatever, and then leave and go back to do his life and do whatever he want to do on the outside. He don't have a uh uh motivation to want to come back home. He's not saying, oh man, you know, me and my wife, we've been intimate. So, you know, I want to, I want to come back home so I can do this all the time. No, he, he's, he's not, he's not moved in that, in that space to necessarily want to come back home because he has options. You, you have allowed him the freedom to go and come as he please and he can be with you. And if he want to be with somebody else, he can be with somebody else and he can do whatever it is that he want to do on the outside. Still go live his life still, go do what he want to do still, whatever, right? He has options. I want wives to understand, and this is not to condemn you. This is not to make you feel like, oh, well, maybe I'm supposed to be doing this. No, this is saying seek God in this area. I've been sharing with y'all for as long as that we are in this new era, right? We, we are in this new era. And God is moving rapidly among us. God is doing some things. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm a witness. I've seen it, okay? God is doing some stuff. And you don't want to be in a position where God is moving and doing things with people around you and your situation is staying the same. You you don't want to be in a position where it's like, uh, well, uh, you know, this is stuff that happened to this person. This stuff that happened to this person. But me, I'm still kind of like in the same place. I'm still trying to figure out why have my husband not come back home yet. Like we we been together. We hang out. We do things. We go on dates. We talk. You know, we are cordial with one another. But he still hasn't made uh, his way back to the house yet. Why? Why would he? What, what? He has the option. You have given him the option to go and come as he please. To lay up with you and still go back outside and live his life that he want to be. A lot of times what these wives are experiencing is, well, you know, I feel like if, you know, if, if he's having sex with me, then maybe he won't necessarily have sex with the other person. Girl, stop that. <laughs> okay? He'll have sex with you and whoever else he can lay up with if that's what his, you know, preference is. Wives got to get to a place where they become more self-disciplined in this area and slash or seek God in this area. You might want to do an assessment on yourself and say, God, hey, is me being intimate with my husband in this way while he's outside of the house? Is this kind of hindering me on my journey? Is this keeping us in this same spot? Is this is this holding up what we got going on? Is is me and my husband being intimate in this way? Is this something that, you know, I should be doing? Is this something that we should be, you know, operating in? Is this something that's hindering me? And wait to hear what he says. Okay? Wait to hear what he says. Because a lot of wives feel like, well, he my husband, so I can have sex with my husband. He, he my husband. God told me my husband come back home, so <laughs> this must be part of, you know, him coming back home. But their husbands are out there longer, way longer than need to be. Because he got, what reason is he going to go and, and, and buy the milk if he got the cow? And you saying, well, I am his wife, so he can, he can have the cow. I'm, I'm his wife. Yeah, but y'all are going through a separation. And so because you're going through a separation, 
Y'all, in a sense, are living two separate lives. But you giving him the option to go and come as he please can be hindering him from coming home permanently, which is part of the promise that God may have made to you. And this is why you need to do an assessment. This is why you need to, <laughs> God, is it, is, is, am I holding up my process? Am I, am I holding up, you know, my husband from returning home because I'm allowing him an entry. I'm allowing him to go, you know, go and come. Am I holding up this process because I am not disciplined enough to not be intimate with him while he's in this position? A lot of wives are holding up their journeys. A lot of wives are in the same stuck place year in a year, year after year. A lot of wives are same are in the same cycle because they have not released themselves. They have not made that cut from having intimacy with their husband. They feel like, well, as long as I can get a piece of him. That, that's that's better than, than not having none of him. Why would you want a piece of something that God has promised is yours? Why would you want a piece of something that is yours? He's your husband. He's your husband. Wives have to separate themselves from the side pieces and remember that you the main you the main <laughs> you the main meal. You you you're not a side piece. But in a sense, you're operating as a side piece with your husband going and coming as he as he will. And you've been intimate with him be just because you guys are able to communicate and just that. Now, you may have some wives who say, well, you know, me and my husband have gotten closer since then. Me and my husband, you know, things have gotten better with us since then. Things have gotten, you know, in a, in a place where, you know, he is, we communicating. He, he answered the phone. I text him. He responds back right away. You know, we talk to each other on a regular basis. We see each other, you know, regularly. But did he come home yet? But did he come home yet? Because at the end of the day, that's what you want, right? You don't want to keep living a life where your husband is going and coming, going and coming in and out, in and out. You eventually want him, want him to be home with you permanently, right? So that's the question you had to start asking yourself. Yeah, things may have gotten better. Yeah, things may have gotten, you know, you guys have gotten closer. Things have gotten in a better place. But... Has he returned home yet? Ha has he returned home yet? Well, Coach T, you know, he's been talking about it. He's been saying he's coming home, but did he do it yet? But has he done it yet? You have to know and understand. You give him options when you're continuing to give yourself to him in that way. Now, there are some instances instance where the husband may still come over and interact with the children. He may still come over and y'all may have meal time, dinner time, that kind of thing. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you and him are being sexually involved with each other and then he picks up his clothes and he gets up and he leaves and he walks out the house and he has another place where he go lay his head at and y'all continue doing this, let me tell you what's going to end up happening. <laughs> I've had this happen. I've, I've had, like I said, I had two sessions today, but I've had a couple of sessions during the week. And this is a situation that has happened with some of my clients where they've been doing this on a regular. <laughs> they, they've been doing this for, for, for years. And they've had that up, down, roller coaster, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. But not yet has that husband made a decision to come home. Not yet. Hello. Has that husband made a decision to come to come back and he has not made a decision to come back because you wife have made it too easy for him you you wife have given him easy open door access for him to go and come as he please so he don't have a reason to rush and come back home he don't have a reason to to be there with you full time he don't have a reason to be there because you have given him open door a open door to go and come as he wants and you're saying well it's, it's better than having, you know, a piece of him than have none of him. But God promised you the whole thing. You, you are not the side piece. You, you're the main meal. <laughs> and so going back to the book, Becoming, and one of the reasons why I wanted to highlight this for this month and over the summer, summertime glow up, is because I want wives to walk in a place of holiness. All right. And you're saying, well, well, I'm married, so I can have this to my husband. Yeah, you can. And, 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 and there's nothing wrong with you being intimate with your husband. But when your husband is in a position, when he's in a position where 
he don't really know where he is on his own journey. He He's still trying to figure these things out. He's still trying to figure out if he's going to be there, if he's going to leave. Do I want to be my wife? Do I want to be with the other woman? Am I going to stay? Am I going to go? You, wife, have to, you have to be a place in, in, in uh, a place of a sturdiness where you are stern enough, where, you, where your foundation is solid. Because when, it all, when it's all said, done, and over with, you want to be able to welcome him back with open arms. You want to be able to be a representative, going back to uh, Trent, uh, his wife, you want to be a representative of Christ where you're able to re receive him with open arms. You're able to receive him with open hands, with nothing attached, with, with, with no attachments. With your husband and you being intimate and he's not inside of the home, there's an attachment. Because what I have also received, the flip side of this, is when that husband finally does come home. Let's just, let's go back to the wife who hasn't been intimate with her husband. Um has not been intimate with her husband while they were separated. And that husband come back home and things work and they go, you know, to get back to a healthy place and whatever, whatever. But then all of a sudden he have a relapse and he go backwards and something happened. That wife now is able to catch her balance. That wife now is not so thrown completely off because she had been disciplined herself over this time that they have been separated. She has been in a place of discipline well, she have not necessarily, you know, she's been used to not being with her husband. She's been used to being, you know, being intimate. So when he decides, oh, I ain't having sex with you today, or we ain't together today, or, you know, I feel like I want to go back outside, she ain't tripping so much. She know to go back to her quiet place, to her secret place. She know how to get back and connect with God. She know how to go back to that place because she has disciplined herself. She, she, she set the boundaries. She guarded her heart. She made the hard decision while she was separated from her husband, right? And so with him going back and forth and being all flip-flop or whatever, she's able to gird herself up a little bit more than the one who may have been interacting with the husband and being sexually involved with the husband while they were separated. I'm going only based off of the data that I have collected from my own clients and from my own experience. I can't give you anything that I don't know for certain. What I know for certain is wise who are not sexually connected to their husbands while that husband is outside of the home has had a better and more successful journey than wives who have been still sexually involved with their husbands while the husband was outside of the home. Now, on the flip side, you have the wife who, okay, her husband finally decides that he's coming home. He, he finally decides that he's coming home, but he don't stay long. He comes home. They called it, I think it was kind of like the false stars. He comes home, leaves, come back, leaves, go out again, leaves. This wife is all, she all over the place. And the reason she's all over the place is because she has been thinking the intimacy, the sex that they have been having together has been what's been sustaining that relationship. She, she's been using, she's been, she's been uh, uh, leaning on the sex to keep that marriage, to keep that man there. She's been utilizing that. And I'm not saying that all wives do this. I'm just talking about the experiences that I have seen and the ones that I have uh, uh, experienced with some of the wives that I coach. Sex will not keep the husband home. Sex will not bring the husband home. Sex will not keep the marriage. Wives have to understand that. It would not be the sex that keeps the husband home. It would not be the sex that brings the husband back. It would not be the sex that will maintain a healthy marriage. Your foundation has to be deeper than sex. And what I have always expressed and shared with the wife clients that I work with, it is better because what happens is you are setting yourself up on how you want to be treated. You are setting yourself up on how you want you want this to go. When you are able to say, no, I'm setting this boundary for myself. You can set that boundary without feeling no type of way. You can walk away with, with your head up without feeling no type of way. When you want to guard your heart, you can guard your heart in that kind of way because you have disciplined yourself. You're not constantly worrying about, well, me and my husband are going to be intimate. Or, I, you know, I want to be able to see my husband, so I want to have sex with him. No, why it's got to take sex off of the table. When it comes down to this journey, and one of the things I want to encourage you to do is take 30 days to assess and see, 
Has God really told you to still be sleeping with your husband when he's on the outside? Ha has God really been telling you that it's okay for you to be intimate with your husband even though y'all not sleeping in the same home and he's not sleeping in the same home with you? H has, has God gave you permission to be with your husband in this way even if, even if he has promised you your husband's coming back home? Your, your husband's coming back home. I share with y'all all the time, one of the things I did not do when separated from my husband, me and my husband wasn't intimate. We didn't even communicate. We didn't even talk. I was led at certain times on certain, on, on certain occasions to reach out to my husband. And I've always shared that was one of the best things I could have done on my journey. Because my focus was not on just me and my husband being sexual. My focus was on, God, what you got me doing? <laughs> God, why you got me here? Lord, what is you trying to teach me? Lord, what is it you're trying to show me? Lord, what is it? You know, sometimes your emotions can be an entanglement. Come on, Jesus. <laughs> sometimes your emotions can be an entanglement. And it can also cause a, a, a stillness in the marriage when it's time for you to make a decision because now God is asking you to make a choice between your husband and him, but you are so entangled with your emotions that you, you are, you completely blinded by what God is trying to show you because God is telling you now, Hey, pull back from him a little bit. Don't call so much. Let him reach out to you. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that route if I was you. But because you done been intimate with him, because y'all been hanging together, y'all been doing things together, now it's hard for you to do that. Because you're like, that can't really be from God. Because, come on, this is, my, this is my husband. I'm his wife. I'm supposed to be intimate with him. Wives, I want to encourage you, over this next 30 days, if you are separated from your husband, and your husband is not living inside of the home, I want to encourage you to... Seek out God in this area and see if this is something that you're supposed to be doing. One of the one of the the most you know hardest things to hear sometimes from wives who have been separated from their husbands for many many years is to also hear that, but they've been very much so involved with each other. They they've been very much so involved, you know, in in doing things. I mean, they've been doing things like husband and wife, traveling the world, hanging out, doing things with the kids, having parties, celebrating, having holidays, just for him to pick up and leave and go back to his house. Just for him to pick up and leave and you don't hear from him for this amount of time or what have you, right? You have situations like this happen. Like these, these types of things take place and it's devastating to a wife who has been trusting, believing that I think because me and my husband's having sex, that things are getting better, but really it can be a hindrance to you on your journey. All right. So I want to encourage the wives. If you are separated from your husband, ask God, am I supposed to be having sex with my husband? God, is this hindering our relationship? You don't have to be ugly. You don't have to be mean. But you do need to set some boundaries. And part of setting healthy boundaries for yourself, wife, is to separate yourself. God called you holy. You, you're separated. You're not, you're not the side piece. You're not the outside woman. <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm not going to be doing things with you. I'm not going to be sharing my husband with multiple women. I'm not going to be sharing my husband. No, 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 no. I'm the good thing. <laughs> they are optional. I, I, I'm, the, I'm the main deal. <laughs> they are choices. And wives have to, you have to know what your worth is when it comes down to that. All right. Again, this is not to condemn anybody, but I have experiences and I have, I have experiences with some of the wives that some of the wives that I have been, I've been coaching. And these wives have been separated from their husbands for a long period of time, some three to five years, but they have been still very much so involved with their husbands. And because they have been very so much involved in husbands and they see that it doesn't matter that I'm having sex with him. He's still not coming home. <laughs> it doesn't matter that I'm, I'm being, you know, I'm hanging out with him. He's still doing what he wants. It, it doesn't matter that, you know, I'm, 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 I'm opening up to him and I'm being nice to him and I'm doing these things. He still has not made a decision to come home. Could that be because of y'all being intimate still? So I just say, just do an assessment. Check with God. Check with God and see if there's something that you're supposed to be doing. Right? Now, before I let you go. I want to address the wives who are living in the home with their husbands 
and they're going through a challenging season or they're living in the homes with their husband and their husbands are in separate rooms or, you know, living a separate life. But the husband is coming home every, you know, coming home. I sometimes have wives ask them, well, am I supposed to be, you know, having sex with my husband if, you know, we hear, but, you know, sometimes he's acting this way or he's doing this or he's pretending to be this way or whatever, whatever. And, and that's, and it's, you have to, you have to seek wisdom in everything. If you and your husband are sleeping in the same bed and your husband and you are sleeping, you know, in the same room and, you know, he's, y'all having sex together, he's having sex with you or he wants to be there with you. Okay. Yeah. Be with, be with your husband in that way. But at all times, at, at all times, seek ye first the kingdom of God. At all times, seek what the Lord has to say about this situation, right? Especially if you got this feeling like, mm, <laughs> something ain't right here. <laughs> something, something, something feels off here. Something, something is a little bit, something is a little bit off here, all right? For the wives who know that something is off or know that their husbands are involved with other women, you have to make a decision to cut. Part of that decision is making a healthy boundary, setting a healthy boundary for yourself. I share with y'all all the time. My husband and me, it was like, no, sir, buddy, you gonna be sleep you sleeping with that person? Oh no, you gonna go across the hall. <laughs> We're not playing them kind of games because I I like me, okay? I like me, and a lot of times what wives don't want to do, they don't they don't want to do that step. They don't want to do that separation. But sometimes the foundation has to come completely down. It has to come come up completely apart in order for it to be rebuilt again. Don't use sex as a means or as a tool in thinking that this is how me and my husband are staying connected together. This is how me and my husband are, are saying, you know, staying, staying connected. That's not necessarily the case, right? My husband was gone from our home for two and a half, for two and a half years. And I was very, I was more connected with him when he was outside of the house than he was when he came home and started acting like a knucklehead. Okay. I was very, very spiritually connected to my husband and knew what he had going on. I could pick up on things and God would place things in my spirit and I would know certain things. I knew when he was moving to a new location. I knew when he was going through something. I knew when he was sick. I knew when he had something going on. I was connected to my husband and we was not intimate at all. We, we was not intimate at all. And then when we had a season when he came back home and he had a relapse, I was able to navigate through that season of us not being intimate then because I was used to not being intimate with him while he was on the outside. So when he was when he had then switched out again and we wasn't having sex again for a season, I was okay with that because my I I was used to not being with him in that way. I had already I, I had already set that boundary for myself. My body was used to that, so I it, it didn't catch me off like we're not having sex. <laughs> we're not we're not together. It was like okay, y'all not having sex. I'm just not together. All right, keep going on. So many wives are being held up on their journey because they feel like. It is the sex or it's the intimacy between their husbands that's keeping them together. Baby, it is God <laughs> that is the glue to that marriage standing together. It is God that is keeping that marriage afloat. It is God that is keeping that marriage going. Nothing else. Nobody else. That's it. God is the one that keeps that marriage together. And if you think, if you think. That you, by you having sex with your husband, is keeping him connected to you or keeping him there or keeping him wanting to come, come over more and more and more. No, 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 no. That's, 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 not, that's not what it is. So, this may not necessarily be for every wife. Every wife may not, this might not necessarily be their may, may story. But what I would encourage you to do is just check with God and see, God, is, is it okay for me to be having sex with my husband? Is, it, is this something I should be doing? Is this something that, you know, I shouldn't be doing? Just let me know because I don't want to hold myself up no more. I don't want to, I don't want no more autism seasons. I don't want to, I don't want to be going backwards no more. I don't want any of that. All right. I don't, I don't want any of that. All right. And so I want to encourage you to do that. Right? So I want to encourage you to do that. Also, we can still, there's still time for you to do the self-care assessment. Y'all see, I got everything, you know, I got my papers and sheets and stuff here. Um, we are doing the self-care assessments. Those are still available for the summertime. Listen, this is your time to glow up. I want wives to do their work. Okay, it is time for you to do your work. The summertime, um, the summertime glow up. Uh, the summertime self care assessments um, have been moved for instead of the three sessions, you would get, you know, you would get four sessions. 
the, the price that we, mental health awareness month is over with so that price has changed that price has changed but that option is still available for you if you are in a position where you need to navigate through your negative emotions come on wise it's time to do your work we are in a new era now and it's like if you don't start doing your work now and getting better now like when are you going to get better on this journey when are you are when are you when are you going to make the changes when when are you going to make necessary steps the bible talks about faith comes by uh uh faith without faith without works is dead faith without works is dead you have to do your work on this journey it's not just always oh, gonna all come to me and fall in my hands no you have a part to do on this journey as well and going back to my his wife book i would encourage you if you have not purchased it go and get this book this is a good summertime read for you to just go through some of the steps that's in here there's a lot of information in here that i share with wives to help you transform through this journey in the most healthiest way you have options on this journey all right you you have options on this journey confront your marital uh grief confront your marital grief confront the negative emotions that you're dealing with confront these things confront these areas confront these things hello and do what it is that you need to do to get healthy for yourself on this journey there are so many options not having um not not doing your work it's, it's an excuse now it's an excuse now you need to do your work this is a summertime glow up all right this is a summertime glow up and now is the time to move forward on this journey so I want to encourage you, if you have not already signed up for your consultation or something to do your own personal work, I want to encourage you to do so today. You can do so at www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com. Check in with God and ask him, Lord, if I'm having sex with my husband and he's not back home yet, am I part of holding up my, my, my journey? Am I hindering myself on my journey because I'm sleeping with my husband and he's and he's... He's not, he's not coming home. <laughs> Nothing has happened. We've been doing this for three, five years. Nothing has happened. Nothing has changed. Am I the reason why? Is it because I'm not willing to make that cut? Is it, is it because I'm not willing to discipline myself enough? Is it is it, is it, is it, is it because I'm unwilling to, to, to release them in that way? God, please show me if, if it's something that I'm doing on my journey to be holding on my process. Especially with me being intimate with my husband. He's not inside of the home yet. He goes, come, goes, come, goes, come. When nothing has changed. And I want to know if, if I'm part of that. All right? I want to encourage you guys. Get checked in. Do not allow this whole summer to go by and you don't check in on yourself. All right? Go purchase the book. Be coming. We're going to walk through this book for the rest of the summer, all right? Like I said, you can probably read it day by day, but I'm going to read it with you, you know, go through it with you week by week, all right? Week by week. This is the time. This is the season for you to do your work. Sign today, www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com. In the meantime, listen. Go on. Enjoy your day. Let me read what you have here. <laughs> Yes. Go back and listen to the replay. In the meantime, y'all go on about y'all business. Have a happy, happy self-care Saturday. And I will see y'all on the other side. All right? Blessings.